Hello everyone, welcome to another session on Python for data science. So today we'll talk about uh, parallel processing in Python. Okay. So what basically is parallel processing is doing the same thing. Uh, so basically at the same time, you're basically running this operation on multiple uh, places. So usually whatever code you run, right, in Python is run sequentially. Say in any code, any code you run, it's basically run sequentially. But one major problem with that is um, it basically takes a long, long time to complete. Okay. Take a use case of where uh, you're basically supposed to update a DB. Okay, you're basically supposed to update a DB with whatever output you have, say whatever model predictions you have, and it could be anything. But you basically are trying to update a DB. Now consider this one happening sequentially, one by one, one by one, okay? Now consider the same thing happening parallelly. Parallelly, say, assume you're uh, running four operations at a time. So you're basically completing four uh, inputs. You're basically, append, you're basically writing four, uh, uh, this thing to the DB, right? So when you actually compare this with your normal normal serial processing, in serial processing, right? you obviously can see a huge amount of time save. Plus, not only time save, it also saves you a lot of resources as well. So that, that is what the basic idea of parallel processing is. You're basically running multiple things at the same time. You're sort of parallelly running it. Uh, right. So in Python, uh, how do you, in Python, there's actually one problem. Uh, so, so before that, we'll actually look at different, uh, these things. So different types of parallel processing. One, there's something just called as multi-threading. Other one is multi-processing. Okay, so this is multi-threading is one multi-processing is one. So basically what happens with multi-threading is, so in, in a CPU, right? A CPU basically is made up of multiple processing cores. Okay, so multi-threading is nothing but in a single core, right? In a single core, you have, you have multiple threads. Thread, right? So thread is some sort of uh, your processing uh, this thing. So that's where all these processes happen. Uh, that's where all the calculations happen. So threading is nothing but that. So in Python, there's actually one problem which is called as global interpreter, GIL, global interpreter rock. Uh, so basically what that means is you can't basically perform multi-threading operations. There is sort of a lock, a sort of restriction on it. So in order to overcome that restriction, okay, in order to overcome that restriction, what uh, it's commonly used in Python is called as multi-processing. Multi-processing basically is you have, say, assume you have multiple cores, you have four cores. In normal, nowadays, all i7, uh, all, all these processes come with the four cores. So you have I, say you have four cores in your system. Multi-processing is basically, you are running uh, each operation. Say, writing to DB could be one operation. So you're basically writing, you're basically running the writing to DB operation on each of these four cores at the same time. So that, that's what multi-processing is. Uh, when you actually compare that with the, when you actually compare this with that of serial processing, you're just writing only once at maybe at, at one second, you're just writing only one, uh, one row or one unit to DB. Right? That, that, that's what is serial processing. So we look at, uh, so that's what we'll focus on. So we'll, we'll focus on multiprocessing. How do you use uh, uh, multiprocessing in your code? Right? So in general, any sort of code can be parallelized provided that there is no dependency. So it's like, say, if your code ha has some dependency, maybe on uh, something which is already run, then multi-processing or in general parallel processing could be a problem because uh, you, there, there's a bit of dependency. So one way to, uh, one way, so we need to make sure that uh, whatever code you're running does not have any dependency. So for multi-processing in Python, we'll basically use a library which is called as uh, multi-processing. So the library itself is called as multi-processing. So we'll basically import, uh, so we'll basically import multiprocessing, and maybe the first uh, and the first thing which we can do is maybe just get a look at how many number of cores this particular system has. Okay. So you basically have functions for that as well. You basically have functions wherein uh, basically takes care of all the CPU count and uh, all of that. So when you run this, you basically get so the number of cores is nothing but four. So this is a four core processor. So the idea is you run each operation in each one of these individual cores. Okay, so you run maybe operation one, operation two, operation three, operation four. You basically run four, oper four operations at the same time. 
uh, right so that, that that's what the idea behind the parallel processing is so in parallel processing again there are two types there's something which is called as synchronous parallel synchronous the other one is asynchronous synchronous is basically processes are completed in the same order in which it was started right so if, if the processes are completed in the same order in which it started it's basically called as synchronous that's asynchronous is basically it's it's uh, the order can be changed so whatever is maybe whatever process got started in third might get completed first so those are asynchronous processing so we'll focus mainly on synchronous for now at least in this particular uh, session mm -hmm. so let's take a simple example where uh, you're, you're just supposed to count how many numbers exist between a range right so you're given a particular array uh, in this array you're supposed to basically figure out uh, how many numbers exist right so you just basically import uh, num y as np uh, so you basically importing time as time so you prepare some random data uh, np dot uh, random dot so you basically prepare some uh, random data right uh now it now you just basically create the array as well in p dot p dot random dot uh, you basically prepare the array as well in p dot random dot and then zero ten um, zero tens is equal to ten comma five so you basically prepare this then you get data data is array dot two list then you basically get the data of uh, five. This, this, this is what basically the data is. Uh, so from this data, basically you need to, yeah, just just figure out which elements are this in, in this particular given range. Uh, so the basic idea is again you time it. So timing it is usually done using the time library. So time li library basically gives you uh, various functions to calculate uh, the time and all of that. Now basically what we are doing is we are basically looping over each row of this uh, array and uh, say we are looking at if this number is between this range and this range I say count as zero so basically for each element of the row okay so for uh, each element of the row uh, so if uh, this element is so this number is this number is greater or equal to minimum or greater or equal to minimum or lesser or equal to maximum right so if this number is greater or equal to less than maximum then basically uh, basically append the count by one right so you're basically in this you're basically returning the count right so this, this is like a fairly very this is like a, this is like a very trivial example i right? keep on going this so this is you, you don't return over here you basically return over here right so you basically have your uh, results this thing as well um, now for, now you are actually iterating this is just a function now basically you're calling dot you're calling that function so you're just basically appending this back to results so num underscore range uh, row say the row is row is basically the input which you're giving over here the minimum is two to five and uh, so yeah this this one should work now you're just now basically what you're doing is you're just printing results print results right now now okay you're ending the time uh, end is equal to time dot time so you just basically do what uh, end minus start right now so this this is what this is what the amount of time it will take so in the first row uh, in the first row you have uh, say uh, only one number which is between that particular range Second row, you have three numbers. Third row, three numbers. Things like that. Okay. Now, this this is how you run it sequentially. Uh, this is how you run it sequentially. Now, how do you run it parallelly using multiprocessing? Is you basically need to write a function. Okay. Uh, that needs to be run multiple times. Uh, so you basically need to write a function that needs to be run multiple times. Basically, you package it as a function. Then you basically need to initialize something which is called as pool. Uh, pool is basically a multiprocessing library object. Uh, which say depending on the number of processes you want to start at the same time you basically initialize so many number of pool objects right uh, and you need to pass the function you want to parallelize to one of these pool objects so what are the common functions we 
to you use to do this is something is called as apply map apply map of the two common functions so in case you don't you do not follow this much need not worry we we'll look at an example here we actually look at how do you actually implement this particular use case so again you just import multi uh, processing multi processing as mp right now now is where you basically create the pool object so you just create pool object is again uh, you're just setting the number of pool objects as the cpu count itself so no need to worry about that as well you just set the number of pool objects pool objects count uh, now you have your data so we are using the same data again nothing new uh, we, we, we're not creating a new data so you just do results is equal to again you can just use a list comprehension right so basically for row in data so for this particular row in data so for you're basically running this for every row in data uh, for every row in data basically what you're doing is you're doing pool dot apply so pool dot apply basically takes care of uh, that uh, parallelizing operation for you okay so you just basically give the num underscore range you basically give the function again it's very similar to your uh, again it's very similar to your normal apply function so guys first you write the function after that is basically where uh, you write the whatever whatever data you need to pass right so num underscore range is this so for row num underscore range so this is a range and The data data also is sort of given right so this is how you run it so even you run this you can just cross verify whether you get the same output and you get the same output as well yeah so this is how you run it using uh, uh, this is how you this is how you run it using uh, your apply now how do you run it using map is again very similar you run using map in a very similar manner uh maybe the way you apply it might change but you, you run it in a very similar manner so you basically say results um, results is equal to so map is you can you can directly apply to that function right you can just say um, you can basically directly apply to that function instead of uh, calling it in a list comprehension uh, so again you need to supply the data uh, so for uh, row in so for row in data so you basically have for row in data so what are you doing for row in data so what are you doing uh, what are you doing in for row for row in data is uh, num underscore range so you're basically getting num underscore range. num underscore range is a function uh, so over here you have not um, you have not put the these things so maybe one thing which we can do is we can basically write this function over here and sort of hard code the inputs it is sort of hard code the inputs we get the results so we can check the results as well after this is run okay so you basically have run into a syntax error uh, so for uh, okay so you remote track two positional arguments okay so this thing is giving a bit of a problem uh, and so now mostly it should work right so basically uh, I'm going to on module oh, so this is basically running into a few issues but the basic idea is basically this only uh, so whenever you run this so you just do you just run a pool dot map uh, right so pool dot map the function name is num underscore range you basically iterate over each one of this okay as then thank you for uh, so th th that that would be it for this session of parallel processing so all of these are basic ideas of parallel processing maybe in the in further videos we'll look at a bit more advanced use cases but for now just trying to make sure you guys understand the concept that's all okay as then thank you we'll meet again in the next video